John James Audubon. Known for drawing over 435 types of birds in North America before the time of cameras, visited Key West in 1832 while on his travels through the U.S. looking for new species of birds to paint and document. It is here, in this spot, where he stayed for a couple weeks with Dr. Strobel. At that time, this was a large lot occupied with the homes of four families, and in the center was a garden of native and imported tropical plants that Audubon would use in his paintings of the local birds. Now, how did Audubon get these animals to stay still long enough for him to paint them? Well, he had a couple ways of obtaining them. One way, and probably the main way, was that he himself killed the animals, and he tried to do it with one shot if possible. And the second was that people would bring them to him. Now, having taught himself taxidermy at a young age, he would then clean and stuff them and use wires and pins to position them in various poses within the surrounding scenery. He was known to draw the birds life-size and fill them in with watercolors. Now, during his visit, he documented 22 types of birds. Audubon lived to the age of 65, having discovered 25 new species and 12 new subspecies. He died at his Manhattan estate on January 27, 1851. More in the no fact. In 2010, a copy of his book, Birds of America, Sold at auction in Sotheby's for $11.5 million. That's a lot. Now, in 1846, a hurricane came through Key West, destroying many of the houses. And it was up to the richest at that time to begin building the city back up. Wrecking was a lucrative business and helped Key West become one of the richest cities in the nation during the 19th century. But what was wrecking? Well, it was the practice of taking valuables from a shipwreck, which was run aground close to shore, then selling them at auction. And it was legal at that time. Now, hundreds of ships would pass by the island and get stuck on the reef in the shallow waters just off the coast. Cries of, Wreck the shore would be heard signaling the disaster at sea, and all the menfolk would then race to get there first. You see, the first to arrive would be, declared the wreck master. No, I'm the wreck master. And basically he was the boss of the ship. I'm the boss, man. The wreck master would first then rescue all passengers and crew members. He would then salvage the cargo and get it to shore, and lastly, save the ship if possible. Now, Captain John H. Geiger was a harbor pilot, one of the top wrecking masters of that time, and one of the top 10 wealthiest men in Key West. He built this house between 1846 and 1849 as a way to show off his riches. It was a perfect spot because at that time, there was an unobstructed view of the ocean. As you see, the customs house and all the other buildings were not yet built. It is here that Captain Geiger lived with his wife, Lucretia Sanders, and their 12 children. Unfortunately, two of their girls would come down with yellow fever and died upstairs in the bedroom, and their youngest son died from injuries sustained after falling out of the tropical almond tree next to the museum. Lucretia would die in 1878, and Captain Geiger followed in 1885. It is said they had a lavish lifestyle, and speculation was that Captain Geiger was perhaps a bit of a pirate. They believe he kept most of the riches from his wrecks and buried them somewhere here on his property. And that's perhaps why his ghost has been seen on the second story porch, guarding his treasures. Or merely he's just staring out to sea, looking for that next shipwreck yeah, you heard me. I said the G word. You see, the Audubon House has been certified haunted by numerous paranormal societies and is listed in the National Directory of Haunted Places. So, who are these other ghosts that reside here? Well, 
There have been sightings of a young girl upstairs on the third floor. And they have captured young children's voices and laughters on EVP. Some people have felt a tug on their clothing or the feeling of being tapped. And they believe that was Charles, the youngest son who liked to play around. Lucretia, Captain Geiger's wife, has also been seen around the staircase. Perhaps she stayed behind to take care of her children and wait for her husband. Now, the Geiger family lived in the house until 1956 when the last known family member, Captain William Bradford Smith, died. He led a reclusive life and lived only on the second floor for over 20 years with no electricity, no running water, or a working kitchen. When he was found, the house was in shambles and the windows had all been boarded up. Whiffs of foul odors have been reported in various parts of the house and they believe it to be Willie still hanging around, not ready to give up his reclusive life yet, even after death. The smell usually will go away if they ask Willie to leave. So now the house was said to be demolished in 1958 when Mitchell and Francis Wolfson purchased the building and began renovations. In 1960, the house was renamed the Audubon House Museum and was opened to commemorate John Audubon's visit in 1832 and the birds he documented. It is said that he himself is another one that likes to visit the area where he stayed for a couple weeks. He's been seen wandering back and forth inside the art gallery next door to the house. Perhaps he's admiring his work or just waiting to see who's going to come in and buy a painting. So on your next visit to the house, make sure you visit that art gallery. You may just run across a tall man in a ruffled shirt and a long jacket reminiscent of the early 1800s. And if you do, well, you just met Mr. John Audubon himself.